Hello everyone and welcome back to the Aaron in China channel on this lovely sunny day here in Shenzhen. Today we're going to be talking about seven simple tips for living in China 2022 edition. So let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to know are the apps that you need to live in China. If you're thinking about moving here, I'm sure if you already live here then these won't be any surprise to you. Okay, first of all you are going to want to get WeChat. Try not to get the international edition. If you can get the Chinese edition, that's even better. Now WeChat is huge in China. Pretty much everyone owns it, so it's been downloaded over a billion times, I'm sure. This WeChat is the main app that you're gonna use inside of China. It can be your wallet. It's gonna be how you communicate with most people. It's also got some social media functionality with sharing videos, photos, joining group chats, etc. WeChat is also the main tool that people use in order to scan things. In China, you're going to have to get used to scanning a lot of QR codes. Um, so this means you'll have to use WeChat in order to scan and open these. Pretty much everything that you're going to want to use will have to be linked with a WeChat. So it's important to get WeChat set up and running before you come to China. I'm sure if you get it set up and running, after you come to China, it's also no big deal. But you definitely need to be aware of WeChat. It's hard to underestimate the intense usage of this app. Like since I have came to China and downloaded the WeChat app, it's pretty much been used every single day. So you're going to have to get used to WeChat. On a similar vein, you're going to want to look at Alipay. Now Alipay is like uh, in Chinese called Zhufu Bao. Um, this is a... Alipay has a lot of different things. I'm sure I'm going to overlay the screen function here. So I pay my rent through Alipay. I, um, I can accept and receive money from friends through Alipay. You can even order food through Alipay. But you're definitely going to want to look at WeChat and Alipay when it comes to anything to do with money. Those are the two main apps you need to be aware of, WeChat and Alipay. So now we're going to move into the other ones that can just help your life a little bit. So let's talk about food delivery. In China, you can get most food delivered to your door, so you never have to leave your house. So you're going to have two options when it comes to food delivery apps. You've got Meituan, which is the yellow kangaroo. Um, and you also have Ulama, which is uh, like, are you hungry? which is an interesting name for an app. Um, so I normally use Meituan, um, but recently I've been going back on Ulama. You can actually order Ulama through Alipay and uh, there's a lot of good deals actually. So you can go in between the two. You'll be able to get lots of coupons for food. But if you're looking for food delivery, then those are your two main ones. You're gonna be looking at Meituan and uh, Ulama. Now, of course, they're all in Chinese, so. You, but most of the restaurants provide pictures. You might just need some help setting up your address once your address is set up, and you have either Alipay or WeChat Pay. You'll be able to pay and get the food delivered to your house. Okay, and the final major point that you're going to want to look at is um, shopping. So normally for shopping, I use Taobao and um, Tmall, but they're kind of interchangeable so you're going to want to look at getting the Taobao app on your phone it's like Amazon on steroids and super cheap and uh, always this is one of the problems when I want to do these outside walk and talk videos it's just random noise that's like incredibly loud right now they're paving over some road and it just stopped me in the middle of my talking so yeah for shopping you're going to want to look at Taobao and Tmall but like I said, they're kind of interchangeable. Tmall, you're gonna to wanna to use for electronics. Taobao, you're gonna to wanna to use for every sort of thing that you could want. Some other quick honorable mentions of apps that you're gonna to wanna to get ready are some map apps. So I use Baidu Maps and AMAP. Um, if you're an Apple user, I think Apple Maps works good or Apple Maps works well in China. You're going to want to get like a Chinese dictionary. Now, I normally use Pleco or I actually use Bing Translate, um, which 
are okay. Pleco can have its limitations. Um, it can pull up some words that are really obscure and not really colloquially used, but it's always good to have a Chinese dictionary app when you want to translate something or you want to find the character in order to search for something. Finally, you're gonna want the VPN of your choice. I normally use Astral VPN. Um, that one has worked really well for me. I used to use Express VPN, but they are really slow and unreliable. Astral is a little bit more expensive, but I don't think I would change away from it because it's reliable and always works. Okay, so as you can tell, apps are gonna be a big part of your life here in China because I'm sure that altogether was a big chunk of these simple tips. So number two is you're gonna wanna learn some simple Chinese. So when I first came, I didn't speak any Chinese. Uh, I think I maybe learned like ni hao, which is hello, and zai jian, uh, which is bye bye. But most people actually just say bye bye in English. So what I did is I downloaded Pimsleur's Chinese audiobook and I would listen to their lessons on the Metro. And this gave me a rather simple baseline of the simple Chinese phrases. But actually how I improved my Chinese was hanging around with people who didn't speak any English. I will give you some of my favorite phrases for people that don't speak much Chinese. So the first one you're gonna to wanna to learn is Ting uh, Dong, which means listen, but don't understand. So basically I can't understand what you're saying. Ting uh, Dong, this is kind of like a cliche. Most foreigners will just say Ting Bu Dong, Ting Bu Dong. And uh, most Chinese people will understand and probably stop trying to speak to you. But it's good when you are dealing with a situation that you don't understand. You can just say Ting Bu Dong, Ting Bu Dong. Another good one when it comes to transactions, your day-to-day -day life is Duo Xiao Qian. Duo Xiao Qian is how much is this? Um, so if you're ordering some food at a restaurant or you want to buy something at a shop, they normally tell you, but you could also just say Jiga Duo Xiao Qian, like this is how much. Which brings me on to the next one is Jiga. Jiga is the the most used phrase by people that don't speak much Chinese, I'm sure. Just, lean, just means this. So when you're at a restaurant, you can point to a picture and say, Jiga, 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 Jiga. If you want to get even better, you could say, Wo yao Jiga, I want this. But Jiga is normally fine when you just want to point something and tell them that you want that. Jiga, Jiga, Jiga. Okay, and the last one I shall do, and the one that helped me the most is um, Jiga Dema Shuo. So this, how to say. Jiga is this, and then Dema Shuo. Dema is how, and Shuo is speak. So how to speak this. Jiga Dema Shuo. That one's quite useful um, when you have Chinese friends uh, or people that don't speak any English around you and you want to learn the word for something. You could point to a piece of clothing, for instance, say like, Jiga Dema Shuo. And they'd be like, oh, this is t shirt, t shirt. Uh, this is a t shirt. This is a t shirt. So, you're going to want to learn some simple Chinese and probably get yourself a teacher or self learn to improve that. But those are my simple Chinese tips. Chabodor, Chabodor. <laughs> Chabodor is another one which is like, more or less. Okay, the, le the third tip is. There goes another beeping. Luckily now there is a lot of content out there for you to see all of these different cities and places inside of China. So you can do a lot more research before you choose a place to go. But do you want to be going to like a second, third tier city? It's a lot more peaceful, but you'll probably be earning less money, but you'll be spending less money on rent. So you should really think about the location that you want to live. If you're coming to China just to learn Chinese, then I recommend going to like a third, fourth tier city and uh, living really cheap and speaking a lot with the locals because not many people will speak English and your Han Yu Shui Ping Ti Gao, your Chinese level can improve. If you want to come to China to live a more international lifestyle, meet more foreigners, um, you can use English on your most day-to-day -day life. 
and to earn money then I recommend looking at the top four cities like Shenzhen, Shanghai, Beijing, uh, Guangzhou is also one and of course Hong Kong um, yeah, but they will be speaking Cantonese mostly so if you're coming to learn Mandarin then I wouldn't recommend going to uh, Hong Kong. Choose your location wisely you're in a much better position than I was. I couldn't find that much on YouTube or anything about the city and there, there wasn't that many there wasn't that much information about Shenzhen or maybe I didn't look hard enough. Okay my fourth tip is to know your yuan or know your renminbi. You're going to want to learn the average price of things um, which you will get in time but it just helps you from getting taken advantage of as a Lao Wai. Um, so let's say a can of coke that's going to cost you like three renminbi. You'll probably convert the renminbi back into your home country's currency so for instance when I came free renminbi was about 30p eventually you'll start to get used to renminbi and now I actually need to convert things into renminbi like if something's in a dollar amount I would say like how much is that in renminbi rather than how much is that in pounds if you'd like to know the average price of um, things in China you can let me know in the comments below and I'll try and reply but for instance I could go to the supermarket buy two chicken breasts a head of broccoli two two cucumbers two carrots and it's gonna cost me between 15 to 25 renminbi okay the next tip is you're gonna need some help when you first get here you're gonna need someone to help you with all of the admin stuff and there is a lot of admin for instance visa situation you're going to need a good HR at your company to help you apply for all the visa documents and to take you to the visa office and to do all of the paperwork etc you're also going to need some help when it comes to rental so there are a lot of agents here in China that will help foreigners find apartments normally the agent fee is half a month's rent and they will help you sign the contract speak with the landlord all of that stuff setting up a bank account again you're gonna need some help you could probably go by yourself hope that someone at the bank speaks English but you're gonna like every time you go to the bank there's like a meme in China where I will put it up on the screen when a foreigner goes into the bank they just like don't know what to do hopefully that's that's gotten better um, all of my bank stuff is set up but if you if I tried to open a bank account now I'm not sure the how difficult it would be I really recommend like asking whoever's bringing you over to China or if you know anyone in China if they can help you with internet sim cards setting up a bank account setting up your delivery addresses on your phone um, setting up your WeChat your Alipay you're gonna need someone that can help you with all of that stuff there is a lot of admin when it comes to living in China which I'm sure there's a lot of admin when you live in any country other than your own okay my next tip which is very specific to 2022 is prepare for quarantine you're gonna be quarantined for many many days two weeks and then some you're gonna need like the, the Sinovac vaccine uh, in order to re-enter there is like a whole Facebook group foreigners stuck outside of China where people are all trying to help each other get back in um, I was fortunate enough to come back to China from a business trip just before they locked everything down and I really hope I can leave again sometime who knows it could be another year or two or even longer at this rate um, but yeah if I was to leave now and come back I'm gonna be quarantined for a long time and most of the time you're gonna have to pay for that quarantine yourself uh, in fact I'm pretty sure you have to pay for that quarantine yourself which could cost you up to 200 renminbi a day for 14 days so you're looking at a healthy amount of change uh, let alone the flight tickets you can also set up an arrangement with a quarantine hotel where included in the fee will be the food fee um, and you'll get like three meals a day um, so yeah prepare for quarantine if you're coming to China in 2022 so my last simple tip for living in China is to not fret 
the small things. If you're an uptight person and if you get annoyed easily at things, maybe you have to work on that yourself because in China you shouldn't stress or you shouldn't fret the small things because there's going to be a lot of culture shock that you're experiencing. There's going to be a lot of things that are done differently that you're not used to. There might be things that you disagree with. There might be things that you can't stand. But I found that most people, if they hate living in China or if they don't like it, then they can normally stay for maybe like one or two years before it just becomes too much for them. Look, I'm not, I'm not trying to say that there are so many annoying things in China, but like, of course, when you go to a country you're not used to and a culture you're not used to, there's going to be things that surprise you and things that you don't know or agree with. So my tip would be to not stress the small things, because if you let those little things pile up and pile up, you're not going to have a good time. Okay, guys, so that's it. That's my hopefully short video about some simple tips for living in China 2022. As usual, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I also just like to give a big thanks out to the people that have donated through WeChat and Alipay. I was so surprised. I actually just put them in my description because I see a lot of other YouTubers do it. I didn't expect in my wildest dreams for anyone to actually go through the effort of scanning and sending money, but I really appreciate it. Um, unfortunately, I can't see the name of the people that do it, and I'd love to be able to reply. For those of you that have sent me some donations, they were spent on why am I? <laughs> no, yeah. they were actually spent on groceries and just went into my bank account and I just spent it like normal. But I really appreciate everybody that watches my videos liking commenting all of that jazz really loving the direction that the channel's going almost at 5,000 subscribers which is just like boom blows my mind so enough of me rambling i'll see you guys in the next video